Okay, so Ellie, how does your robot work? It works by if we go, if the ultrasonic sensor and see something closer than 50, it will turn the opposite way. But if it goes too much far than 50, it will go the opposite way. And that's how it keeps on working. And does it do that forever? Yeah. All right, turn him on and show him in action. So if the ultrasonic sensor is less than 50, you go from the power of 80 and, to, and stay positive 20. If, if the ultrasonic sensor sees something bigger than 50, you would move in the power 80 and stay in the power of negative 20. And it goes for on and on because it's in a forever loop. So there's the robot in all its finished form. It's all standard components that come with the MakeBlock Ranger kit, except for the battery. I always power in from a little hobby art, two cell hobby RC LiPo battery. I'm using 1100, 1100 milliamp hours because it's a nice size. Always want to use LiPo batteries. I always put a battery monitor on it. You can get them off eBay for about two bucks. They'll sound an alarm when the battery's getting low. You shouldn't run these all the way flat it'll either damage the battery or the battery won't recharge or worst case scenario when you try to recharge the battery it could catch fire i also have myself i made up a little adapter piece here to be able to plug it into the make block ranger board but you can also buy those off ebay as well but biggest thing is how do i build this Okay, this is my center section. I build most of my robots with this. It's a fairly standard build. I just arrange the two motors in, a, in that configuration and I just simply screw this crossbar down with these standoffs all coming standard with the Ranger kit. This is the assembly section I use for the ultrasonic sensor. I use this bit on the bottom there because you can see it can be connected up in any rotation. You don't just have to put him down square or at 90 degrees. You can also screw them down at 45 degrees as well. So it's just that section with the little right angle to the top of it. So then I can screw the ultrasound to it. All right, so that's the ultrasound section at the front of the robot. Okay, this is the back section. We have our little um, drag wheel that we use um, coming up to an up bar, coming across the bit there with that on the top. Now I also added just these couple of bolts in there and they're spaces to help the main board sit and that'll become obvious a little bit later on the next section. Here we are with the three sections together. I just simply screwed that front section on on the very front one there at 45 degrees so it looks out at 45 degrees and then I've just screwed this plate on the top. You'll notice it's offset a little bit on one side than the other and I offset it on the side because I'm going to put shift him this way a little bit because I'm going to be plugging into this side over here, okay? We just offset that way a little bit and screw down. The thing I've just added at the moment, I've put a little rubber band and a crisscross there. That's because I'm just going to lift the rubber band up and slide my battery in there. It's just going to work to hold my battery down. All right, the next bit I'm going to do is I'm going to put, obviously, mount this up here on top. When I mount it up on top, what I do is I put two of these little spaces they also come standard in the kit just like that. So it's gonna sit flat down on the spaces on these heads and that head there nice and evenly. If I didn't have the spaces there, there'd be the little gap. And as I did the screws up, it would want to twist and bend the plastic and could break the plastic. It was also down quite tight here and that was sitting in the air up there. The weight of it over the bumps will try to bend it down and also break it. So I've made sure I've supported the plastic case well over the whole robot so it can't twist like that these corner bits can't be bolted down too tight okay there he is fully assembled with the top down 
Um, you can plug the ultrasonic sensor into any port you want. I've just plugged it into 10. Obviously, the, the motor plug on this side goes to the motor on that side, and the motor plug on the other side goes to the motor plug on the other side. Um, I've got my battery in there. I'll put the little battery monitor up the side there. I've just simply plugged my power supply in the back there. She is ready to program and play now.